Since I make so many takes, grades, ranking style videos on the channel, something that I love to do is go back and react to what my takes were initial. So today's video, I'm going to be reacting to my 2022 NBA draft grades. This was the draft that was headlined by Paul Bancaro, number one, Chad Holmgren, number two, Jabari Smith Jr., number three. And I'm definitely going to be reacting to my 2023 draft grades. I'm probably going to wait till the end of the regular season to do those. But if you guys want to see me react to my 2021 or 2020 draft grades, drop a thumbs up on the video. And yeah, I'm going to make fun of my old self here. This is basically right after the 2022 draft. And I'm very interested to see what grade I have, like Jalen Williams to the Thunder, because that one I didn't really know about too much at the time. All right, so here we go. Do the video. So with the number one overall pick in the draft, I have the Orlando Magic getting a B plus. Yes, the number one overall pick isn't an A. Paolo Bancaro was my fourth ranked player in this draft class, and that's why it's a B plus. He's a- All right, yes. Um, Going back to this, I did not- love Paolo Bancaro as a prospect. There were some weird like conditioning things, shock creating things at Duke, and I was way too conservative. So if you remember too, also before I get back into this, Paolo really wasn't supposed to go number one overall. We all thought it was going to be Jabari Smith Jr. And then it completely swapped on draft night. Chet Holmgren was my number one prospect. I believe I had Ivy two or Jabari Smith two and three, and then Paolo at four. Still liked him a ton as a prospect and thought he was still in the tier with those guys. But yeah, this is a fat L for me, 100%. Paolo was on Team USA, and he's one of the best younger players in the league. He was an all-star in year two. A fantastic player. I think he can win Rookie of the Year. I also predicted that he's going to score the most in the rookie season out of every other rookie. I just would have went Chet Holmgren, and if not Chet Holmgren, Jabari Smith Jr. That's why it gets a B plus. Chet Holmgren at no Okay, so I did have Chet as my number one, Jabari Smith two. I had Ivy three. I liked him a lot of Purdue, but I also kind of tend towards like liking guards a lot more because it's just kind of my bias is my style of play, something I gotta get better at. Number two for the OKC Thunder is actually going to be an A plus. Yeah, I was going to make it an A, but you're getting my number one player in the draft at number two. That's really good. I think he's going to have the best career out of anybody in this class, and that's why it's getting an A+. Jabari Smith Jr. at three is going to be an A for me. We all thought he was going to be going number one overall to the Magic. On the day of the draft, it goes, whoa, it's Paolo Bancaro. There's at one point where he was like plus 700 odds to go number one yesterday, and he ended up going number one. But getting Jabari Smith at three, I think I actually like Jabari Smith in Houston better than Paolo Bancaro. He is my... All right. <laughs> that, that's probably an L take from me for sure. I feel like I kind of aced the, the reaction to Chad Holmgren. I should have just swapped what I said about Paolo and Jabari. Okay, best player in this class. You got him at three. That deserves an A. At number four, we have the Sacramento Kings selecting Keegan Murray. That is a B from me. And I love Keegan Murray. Don't get me wrong. And apparently there were some reports that Jaden Ivey like, didn't really want to play for Sacramento. I just have like Ivy so much higher than Murray when it comes to talent level. And maybe just even think about trading down and acquiring more talent to try to make a playoff run next year could have been a better option. But either way, I'm still excited to see him at Sabonis in that front court. And no okay, so like Murray's been, I think like sometimes inconsistent in year two. He had a good rookie year for them. And I think there's times where it's like he gets phased out of that offense a little bit. And I still think Ivy has a higher ceiling as a player as Ivy has actually been playing a little bit better as of late um, than I would say Keegan Murray has been on a nice stretch. And obviously he's been dealt in a horrible situation situation in Detroit. We'll get to in a second here because I definitely love that pick. But yeah, I think just kind of going back to it, obviously Ivy kind of maybe provided the same issue that the Kings thought they had with Halberton and Fox. And Ivy's like definitely a lesser version of Fox coming out of college. So I get them not taking Ivy and taking Marion in hindsight. I still think it was a solid pick. Obviously in hindsight, you probably would have taken Jalen Williams here. But yeah, this was definitely still a good pick by Murray or by the Kings taking Murray. But I don't think Murray still has a high of a ceiling as Jaden and Ivy does. And that's just my opinion. Number five, this is going to be another A plus for me. It is Jaden Ivy to the Detroit Pistons, and that's an A+. Plus. Yeah, he's my third-ranked player in the draft. You got him at five, and I've been salivating over it for so long. I've been mentioning it in my- The glazing is off the charge. What am I saying? Drafts, like the Jaden Ivy, Kate Cunningham backcourt would be just so much fun to watch, and I can't believe we're going to get it next year. But All right, honestly, they've had their issues um, with Monty Williams not wanting to play Ivy. Ivy was inconsistent at times in his rookie year, but actually had a pretty good rookie season and definitely a better second half. But Cade was hurt all throughout the year, so we didn't even get to see that. And then Cade's been hurt this year, and like I just said about Monty not playing Ivy, we're seeing it right now, which is nice. So hopefully it's still like TBD on that backcourt going forward. Nick Matherin to the Pacers at six is going to get a B plus. They could have gone in maybe some different options here if they like Shaden Sharp, possibly Dyson Daniels, but I really like Matherin. This was the, the selection I would have made if I were here between him and Sharp, but B plus, it's a pretty good pick. I'm excited to see Benedict in Indiana. I guess like in hindsight, I think the Pacers could still be where they are 
with Shaden Sharp instead of Matherin, and I still believe that Sharp has a higher ceiling than Matherin overall as a player, and Sharp has obviously not been in a great kind of environment in Portland and is dealing with a major injury right now. I think the Pacers probably don't regret this pick at all, as they're in also a different timetable and like a, a timeline than the Blazers have, where they could have taken a project player like Shaden Sharp, who's one of the youngest, I think the youngest player in this draft, um, him kind of uh, reclassifying early, but yeah, probably worked out they didn't take Dyson Daniels here. Number seven, Shaden Sharp to the Blazers, it's actually an A-. minus Now, do the Blazers need another guard? Not really. You have Simon to Dame. You could use more wings there. But this might be a top three talented player in this class. You're getting him at seven. You need to improve your bench, especially on the offensive side. So you go out and get Shaden Sharp. And I think like Sharp is definitely forward out like capable too. And we've seen that at times there now that they have Scoot Henderson. Like obviously when I had this reaction, they had Damian Lillard for another year. And I think Sharp still has some of the like best upside in this class and potential when he's still an extremely young player. It sucks that he has a major injury right now and hopefully he can bounce from, back from it. But I wonder if also like Chauncey Billups is the right guy to lead him going forward. So we'll see. But I don't think I've said anything too crazy here outside of the Paolo stuff. I think like my Ivy takes have been fine. I still like Jabari Smith and he was dealt a horrible kind of environment like a couple of these other guys in year number one in Detroit but I think I'm I'm okay with everything I said besides my power bank character take. he should have been uh the number one guy in this class and I didn't see that which is on me 100%. Mr. Daniels to the Pelicans at eight is a B plus for me I'm only just worried about his playing time next year with Jose Alvarado with McCollum playing some point guard here and there and Devontae Graham I hope he gets a lot of run I love this player in this class he's gonna be a good scorer um at the rim we'll see how his shooting can go he's gonna be a great passer good rebounder I think he's gonna really try on defense this year and it can be really good for a Pelican team that desperately needs more defenders. And that's why it gets a B plus for me. Number yeah, I think for Daniels too, I think that's pretty accurate. I think like the shooting was the one thing coming out of the G League Ignite, like a lot of other G League Ignite prospects. And it hasn't really worked out too much. He's also dealing with an injury right now. And we're still so early into these players' careers. They could reinvent themselves in year three, year four, year five, etc. So I think Daniels uh, has still been a fine pick. He's a good defender. But I think what I said too, didn't get too much run in his rookie season. Obviously, there's a lot of guards on that team. He was playing more this year. It is unfortunate he got hurt. Now, Let's see what I say about Jeremy Sohan. Number nine, the San Antonio Spurs, they took Jeremy Sohan. This is a B. Now, I love Jeremy Sohan in the draft. He's never going to be an all-star, in my opinion, but he's going to be those guys, maybe not like Jermon Green. It's hard, it's unfair to compare him to him, but just like one of those like important role players on a championship team. Like players like Grant Williams and Marcus Smart for the Celtics this year. Probably never be all-stars, but you need guys like that, and that's what I think Sohan can be. Maybe just a little bit high at nine for San Antonio, especially for where they are in their timeline. But don't worry, they'll pick later on that get better grades. Johnny um, yeah, okay. I was like, wait, was this is Joshua Primo uh, class? But no, that was twenty one. So yeah, I did like the uh, the Wesleyan Branham picks a little bit more. But yeah, so and I think. I don't think he'll be an all-star, but he could be that glue guy role player because he is a good facilitator for somebody with his size. Obviously, the point guard experiment with him and the Spurs this year did not work out, but I think he could still be a good player next to uh, next to Wemby. Maybe just he's not going to be the top three option. Maybe he has to kind of realize that going forward. I need this to the Wizards at 10. That's a B plus for me because I'm just yeah. this is where I could have given enough and I could have looked like a genius. Not sure what they're doing in the backcourt. Are they moving field to the point guard position? Are they going to be going after a point guard in free agency? I would have liked to see. And that, that was true because they ended up getting, if I remember correctly, was it Spencer Dinwiddie or did they? Yeah, I think they got Spencer Dinwiddie in free agency. Maybe get a little bit aggressive and maybe moved up to get Dyson Daniels. Would have costed a lot. Uh, but yeah, I'm just interested about the fit with Davis and Beal back there. Number 11, we had the New York Knicks. They ended up trading the pick to oh, the OKC Thunder. And I'm going to give this a B minus. Now, I do like Usman Jang. I think he projected to be a very good defender in this league with his size and frame. But it is going to take some time. But that's the perfect scenario in OKC. Nobody's rushing you. I just giving up three first round picks. Was that worth it? And Jalen. Yeah. Okay. So before we get to J Dub, I think Jang. That's still a perfect assessment. Obviously, it was going to take more time for him as of like a Ross prospect coming over. And I think I didn't realize that the Thunder were going to be this good in 2024, and even like as good as they were last year in 2023. At least as a respectable playing tournament team. So I didn't really expect that. Obviously, there's a lot of talent and guys with higher upside in OKC um, uh, uh, for Us than Usman Jang. So it's still kind of a TBD with him going forward. I don't know why, but I feel like I didn't give this pick a great grade because I didn't know too much about J-Dub outside of just kind of like typical Santa Clara games that I, I, I watched and followed and I didn't think he had maybe lottery pick pedigree so I'm kind of scared what I, I say here because I did forget what I mentioned. Williams at 12 is going to get a B for me. Now I do like Jalen Williams more than Zhang at least at this current moment 
But same thing. Like, I don't know if it's like they thought some team was going to take Jalen Williams or, or the Knicks or some team was going to trade up was going to take Usman Jang. And they're like, all right, we got to give up three first round picks for one of these guys. I just thought that was a little bit steep. And that's why uh, Williams gets a B and Jang gets a B minus. Okay, okay so I'm glad I liked, I liked the J-Dub pick a little bit more. And I didn't say anything crazy because I do remember at least liking what I saw from him as a shot creator. And honestly, his upside as a defender as well, because he's somebody now that I think has developed his game where he could do everything pretty well. Um, I would say like kind of like a Tyrus Halliburton um, when he was coming out of Iowa State. Something I loved about his game in the 2020 draft is he wasn't like elite in too many things, but he was not like I think average in anything. Like he was above average in all aspects of the game. Defense, transition, shooting, passing, inside scoring, off ball defense. And I think J-Dub has kind of developed into that type of player, but even a higher, I guess, level right now is he's been arguably the best player from this draft class. Like you could put him up there with Paolo and Chet right now, which is crazy to say because I don't think a lot of people knew he could have done something like this when the Thunder took him in the lottery. Owen Duran going to the Detroit Pistons at 13. This was originally the Hornets pick. This is going to be an A. Yeah, I love Jalen Duran. It's a weird fit in Detroit with him and Isaiah Stewart. I don't know who's going to be the long-term five. I'd assume it's going to be Jalen Duran. But those pick and rolls with Duran, Cade, and Ivy are just going to be so much fun to watch. They're going to be like a top league best team next year. They are fun to watch when they actually play. And I feel like obviously they've gone... Um, from Dwayne Casey to Monty Williams, and it's been a weird transition. So I don't even think we've been able to see that to like the fullest of its ability, but I still think it could be something very promising for years to come. Team, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers taking O'Shea Baji. It's an A minus for me. This is the guy I wanted them to take. They needed a ready NBA score to come off the bench and O'Shea's their guy. Yeah, yeah, I remember just really liking this pick when it happened. I mocked it a ton and I thought he was somebody because the Cavs got eliminated in the playing tournament this year. And I was like, okay, he can contribute, be a bench score for them right away. He obviously ended up being a nice piece in the Donovan Mitchell trade a year later. Now he's in Toronto, hoping he can kind of revive his career a little bit there because I did like him a ton um, when he got drafted back um, in 2022 by the Cavs out of Kansas. 15, we have the Charlotte Hornets taking Mark Williams. This is a B plus. I love Mark Williams in this draft. I just thought it was interesting to see them trade away pick 13 for like a future Denver first round pick and you get a bunch of seconds um, and taking, I guess, or choosing Mark Williams over Jalen Duran. I don't know if I would do that, but either way, I'm happy Charlotte ended up going with a big. And yeah, I think Charlotte honestly has been a solid drafting team. Like 2021, horrible draft for them. James Booknight, Kai Jones in the first round, throw that out. But hey, Mark Williams here was a good pick. Brandon Miller at two when a lot of people thought they should have taken Scoot, including me, great pick. I like that they got Nick Smith at the end of the first round that year as well. They took Lamelo Ball in 2020 and PJ Washington at the end of the, of the lottery in 2019. Honestly, the Hornets have been a respectable drafting team. Even like Miles Bridges, not a great person, but it was a good draft pick in 2018. So you know what? The Hornets, I think we have to give a little bit more respect since like, I guess, 2018 for them drafting. Now you could kind of go back to some other years in the 2010s. It wasn't great, but yeah, good pick by them. One thing that I just love to do to spice up watching the NBA, either it's at home or going to the game, is playing fantasy sports. Today's video is sponsored by the easiest way to play fantasy sports all NBA season, and that is Underdog Fantasy. It's my favorite place to play fantasy games. My favorite part about Underdog is the pickup feature that is super easy to play. You pick two to five stats of your favorite players or either a game you plan on watching or following and choose if they can go higher or lower. It could be in personal fouls. It could be in points. It could be in triple doubles. I recently hit a four picks for $100 on Christmas day where I got Josh Hart to get higher than seven points, Damian Lower to get higher than 25 and a half points, Jalen Brunson higher than four and a half free throws made. And then another thing that I love that Underdog does is promos at times, which you can combine in a pick and play. And this was one point equal equals you win for Giannis Antetokounmpo. All I needed him to get was over a half a point. And they'll do plenty of those throughout the season as well. And if you get all your picks right, you can make up to 20 times your money on a single NBA game. You can also do rivals picks as well, which pits two players against each other. And that could be in your typical points, rebounds, and assists as well. So yeah, what are you waiting for? Sign up at Underdog Fantasy today at underdogfantasy.com or the App Store. And use my promo code SROSROSS to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. You will also receive a new customer special, or aka a mystery pick, which will get you a pick special in your lobby when you sign up using code SROSS that you can see on your screen now. You also must be a certain age in your state to play Underdog Fantasy. Every state that's legal to play Underdog will be in the description below. And please, like always, remember to play responsibly. So yeah, use code SROSS at sign up to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. And thank you again to Underdog for sponsoring today's video. And when at 16 taking AJ Griffin, this is an A- for me. I thought he
thought he was going to go in the top 10 at some point. I mocked him 11 to the Knicks. Surprised he didn't go in the lottery. Steal for the Hawks at 16. Dude, AJ Griffin had such a good rookie year and so promising. It's been such a step back here in his sophomore year. I just think they got to move on from him. I like if they, I wish China they traded him at the deadline if they just don't view him in their future plans. I don't know. I still think he had great 3D potential and we saw that in his rookie season. It's kind of annoying. We have another A pick here, and that's Tari Eason to the Love Rockets. Tari Eason coming out of LSU, man. I would have taken him at the back end of the lottery. Rockets at 17. I just love Tari Eason. I think that 17 is incredible value. We'll see what they do kind of in that front court because they have Jabari Smith Jr. now. They have Alperu and Shangu, and they also have Usman Garuba. Like, we'll see where Jay Sean Tate's going to be playing. Now Eason, but I, I love Eason either way. Imagine, like, I don't know, like Cleveland took him at 14. Now he would have probably been in the Donovan Mitchell trade, but I'm just kind of imagining uh, Easton playing behind Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, which would have been nice. And obviously he's been somewhat of a backup, started somewhat, uh, I guess, like last year or this year, um, but he's been hurt too. So it's been kind of a shame, but I still love his style of play. And I think he'll be an NBA player, good role player for a long, long time. 18, we have the Chicago Bulls taking Dale and Terry. It's a B. I like Terry a lot. I wish I had the, I wish I had the balls at this time to give some picks a C because I definitely didn't like this pick, but I was being conservative here and giving it a B. And I think I've gotten better with that too and being a little bit more out there with some of my draft grades because I didn't I think this should have been a B, but let's hear what I have to say. I think there were some other players on the board that I would have preferred. So don't, so don't give him a B. Give him a C. Give him a D plus. In Chicago. And if Tari Eason went to pick prior, who I would have loved there, maybe just trade up a little bit. That would have been nice to see Eason in Chicago. Jay Horavia to the Timberwolves at 19. This is a C plus. Okay, like there we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. You know, I should give this a D plus. Lauravia, and I thought he was going to be a late first round pick, but giving up like 22 and 29 to go up and get Loravia for Memphis was a little interesting. At 20, we have the San Antonio Spurs taking Malachi Branham. This is an A+. Plus. Okay, yeah. yes, yes. So this is where I actually was, I guess, a little, um, I guess, not conservative here. And I give this an A+. Plus. This is one of my favorite picks. I love Branham as a shot creator or secondary shot creator coming out of um, Ohio State. I like his playmaking ability. I liked him a lot. I was wrong. Obviously, this was a later first round pick, so it's not like I was like hammering my, all my takes and my, my credibility on a guy going in the top five, but I like Branham a lot at the time. I still think he could be a good player, so I'm not done with him yet. Yes, I think Branham could have been like a sneaky lottery pick. He obviously didn't go there, and I mentioned this before. If there was a, like a Donovan Mitchell from 2017 in this year's class, it'd be Malachi Branham. Uh, Christian Brown. All right, all right. I'm not going to say that's the worst take ever yet. I, I mean, he's not going to be Donovan Mitchell for sure, but... I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I mean, his time to shine would be in San Antonio. I know they have a lot of wings, but god damn, man. I, I really like Branham. I did. Going to the Nuggets at 21 is a B plus for me. He played super well in the tournament, was one of the draft's biggest risers, and I'm excited to see him in Denver. There were some other players I would prefer with that team, but I like seeing Brown go there. Kind of skipping it towards the end there, but I forgot. Yeah, this Kansas team, they won it all with Ogbaji and Christian Brown. 22, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves taking Walker Kessler. This is a C plus. Uh, I don't really know what they're doing with Nas Reed now. Like obviously at the power forward spot, you got Jared Vanderbilt and Jaden McDaniels. I just didn't know if they should go for another kind of backup center option. Maybe Nas Reed isn't on the team next year. We'll see. That's okay, so I guess to be fair, uh, this is before a Gobert trade happened. Um, the Gobert trade happened later that offseason. Um, still an L take by me for sure. Like I, I didn't like maybe the idea of Minnesota taking Kessler, but thinking back on it, like. Kessler, I think, would have been fine in Minnesota. And I think he's taken a little bit of a step back from his rookie year, but that's still 100% an L take for me. Hand, hand up. That one's on me. 23, we have the Memphis Grizzlies trading DeAnthony Melton to the 76ers. Love that trade for Philly, by the way. For David Roddy out of Colorado State, this is a C-. minus. This is somebody... All right, I'll take it. That's a great take because he's not even on the team anymore. That I thought they could have just kind of 29 originally and kept DeAnthony Melton, who's a good bench player for you. At 24, we have the Milwaukee Bucks taking Marjan Beauchamp. This is a B... Uh, he's a little raw as a prospect. I mean, he's older in age, though. I just feel like Milwaukee had to hit on this pick as a bench scorer, but I like Beauchamp over some other guys that they could have taken here. Okay, that's fair. It's a shame Doc Rivers doesn't prioritize his development or really the Bucks haven't really since he's entered the league. It feels like they could prioritize it a little bit more. I know they're trying to win now, but he could be a good defender. He could be a nice 3 deep guy for you if you just give him a little bit more runtime. Wesley to the Spurs at 25. This is an A. Blake Wesley. Uh, I love the Wesley and Branham picks. That's that's on me. One of my favorite players in this class and getting him at 25 along with Malachi Branham before. I just love that from the Spurs. It's funny because I loved their picks at 20 and 25 more than I like the pick at 9. Wendell Moore at pick 26. This is technically going to Minnesota. 
I'm gonna be giving this a B. Wendell Moore is like a couple of these other guys, like Christian Brown, like O'Shea Baji. He's NBA ready. And maybe he can eat at those Malik Beasley minutes next year. All right, well, that's just not been the case. Wendell Moore has barely played for Minnesota and has, I don't know if it's his development. Obviously, maybe they're not seeing stuff in practice and obviously when he's on the floor, but he hasn't really done too much in Minnesota. Well, Jovic going to the Miami Heat at 27. Now, I like Jovic as a prospect, but to Miami, I'm giving this a B minus. I'm just kind of intrigued on how he's gonna fit their style of play. I would have preferred maybe a wing scorer off the bench, like uh, looking at possibly a Jaden Hardy or who I mocked, Bryce McGowan. Okay, so I guess this is probably like compared to Hardy and McGowan, it's probably the better pick. And they got that bench score a year later with Jaime Hawkins, and that's probably what I was envisioning for them. But um, yeah, I mean, Jovic shouldn't do anything really for them in their rookie season, but he's been better this year. And I didn't think Miami was going to be that patient with him, and they have been, but I got to respect the Heat culture and how smart they are with their philosophy as a franchise. So uh, yeah, definitely better than that so far in hindsight, looking at that Jovic pick. So Patrick Baldwin, he was like a top prospect going into this uh, year, this college year, went to Milwaukee. Um, he was supposed to go like top five. He did not have a great collegiate season. Obviously, he hasn't really done anything in the NBA. Golden State Warriors taking Patrick Baldwin Jr. I'm giving this a B. Now, I don't really love Baldwin at all because he played really bad in Milwaukee last year. He's really drafted based on his potential. And Golden State was a weird fit because are they really going to develop him um, at the NBA level or is he going to be a big G League player next year? We'll see. Yeah, that's why it's getting that great for me. And then he ended up getting, I, I believe, in the Chris Paul... Uh, Jordan Poole trade a year later. Ty Washington technically going to the Rockets at 29. This is an A minus. I love Ty Ty in the strip. I thought he could have been a sneaky lottery pick and they got him at 29. Big fan of that. And at 30. He's like the one, the one Kentucky prospect guard that didn't work out. Like we have just years and years of Kentucky guards working out. Jamal Murray, Devin Booker, Shea Gojus Alexander, Tyrese Maxey, Emmanuel Quickly, um, and obviously others, uh, Darren Fox, and there's a bunch you can go into. Even Malik Monk has been a good player now. But yeah, Ty Ty did not work out for uh, for Houston. We have the Denver Nuggets selecting Peyton Watson at a UCLA. Oh this is going to get one of my worst grades. It's going to be a D plus. Uh, if you look up Peyton Watson's stats last year, they weren't great. I really thought he should have stayed another year at UCLA because he didn't get a lot of run last year. But hey, he must have killed the combine. He must have killed the workout with the Nuggets. I just thought it was not a great pick. So, yeah. All right, to, to, to defend myself here. Peyton Watson played in 32 college games. He averaged 3.3 points, 2.9 rebounds. He shot 32 from the field and he shot 22% from three. <laughs> Obviously, there was a lot of reasons why I didn't like this guy. I thought he needed to stay another year at UCLA, and that's why I gave it, like, the D-plus here. I, I just feel like that the Nuggets obviously just came off a playoff exit to the Warriors, and I thought maybe they could have taken somebody that could help them right away, and I mean, they ended up taking Christian Brown, which did happen, and they could be patient with Watson, and he's looking a lot better in year two. So I think that's something I have to do better as myself evaluating these prospects and at least giving out these initial draft grades as the prospects that I'm like, wait, they went that high? These good teams are taking these guys that may take a little bit of time to develop. There's probably a reason for doing that. I think Jovic is a good reason. I think maybe Yushman Jang could be a good reason. And obviously Peyton Watson has shown that. So yeah, that is gonna be for me. Hope you guys did enjoy. Drop a thumbs up if you guys wanna see me react to maybe other free agency grades, mock drafts, or just other draft grades from previous drafts. Cause it's kind of funny to make fun of myself in hindsight, just looking at that now. Also the Just Ballin' podcast is back. I've done three new episodes. Those are gonna continue to come out. Link to that is in the description. I actually got the old RSS feed for Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So if you were kind of following in 2020, it's gonna be back on there right now, which I'm very excited for. Obviously, the YouTube links are in the description. It's a full dedicated channel for that. I love you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.